Let us begin. Hello everyone and welcome to BHC Studios. Today we're doing the best of my favorite things of 2023. Now I know this video is a little bit late, but you can't look forward in 2024 unless you look back. And also I get a lot of questions about like what's my favorite camera, what's the best camera, what's the best bag, what's my favorite bag, things like that. So I thought I would just put it all on one video and I got a lot to go through so I have notes. And so to begin, favorite camera that I use for personal use 2023 and I showed you right here, it is the Leica M10R with the 28F2 uh, Simicron V1. Now I did also use a 40 mil f2 i love that lens but i think in the end i'm a 28 shooter and not a fan of this huge lensed i hope my buddy thomas at square hood will make me a square hood version of this lens yeah i borrowed this from camera west they did say i can have it on a long-term loan back in 2022 had it for a year and I just couldn't imagine shipping this back 40 megapixel sensor the M11 higher resolution better high ISO noise but something about the color I embed a picture that I did of trees that's pretty much straight out of camera just a bit of exposure and white balance but that's about it so I, I just love using this for personal use I love manually focusing I love the rangefinder way of viewing and shooting as well as the aesthetics of this and on my day off this is pretty much what I gravitate towards but as well another camera that I love using in 2023 is my X Pro 3 with the 3514 and this does have a square hood thumb rest and a square hood hood and as well as the uh, retro photo reading um, brass shutter release but I love this camera since it came out in uh, 2019 I was in Toronto Montreal for the launch event with Juan from Beers and Cameras and love this uh, titanium top. This year is probably the year that they're going to replace this with the X Pro 4. I, I really do hope they keep this crazy reverse LCD screen. A lot of people don't like it, but maybe that's kind of why I like it. But just having this protected while I'm out shooting is great. And all my days off again, I just love using this camera. Rangefinder style, I would say it's a moderate interpretation of a rangefinder. But I just, again, as you can tell, I am in optical viewfinder mode. I'm not in EVF mode. When I need to, I have a little mini EVF for white balance, for critical focus. But overall, just love shooting this camera on my days off. Now, my favorite film camera, you probably know what it is. It is the Leica M7. And I do have the retro photo reading shutter release on here as well, the, the big thick boy. But I've taken this on pretty much all of my travels and on my days off, I also shoot this. And testing, I use this uh, camera as well. And this is the limited edition Elcan, uh, 50th anniversary of Elcan edition here. And as well, my 35Ti. I love my 35Ti for testing film again and just on my days off having something small and compact on me all the time. Favorite camera straps. That's probably a pretty obvious one. On the M10R here I have the Coupe Orange Collection. This is in the, the blue version and I also have it in the green. I picked these up when I was in Salzburg at the Coupe headquarters and I just love these, especially for a little bit heavier cameras. I like having the stability of this rope strap. Now one of my favorites for years has been this uh, Canon Film Photo Kuda Japanese silk strap. This is in the purple colorway. On my X-Pro3, I have the, the discontinue. So you gotta buy these when they come out if you like the colorway. This is in the orange, blue, and gray. One of my favorite colors right here. I love orange, as you can tell. But on lighter cameras, I love this one here. And finally, the this is a new parachuter strap from uh, Wotencraft. I love the mixture of the paracord with the, the nice leathers when it's around your neck here. It feels really comfortable. Tons of different color combination variations. But so far, this has been like my favorite new strap that I've been using the last couple of months near the end of the year. And here's the, the camo. This is a camo version here, but the parachuter style. I've been using the regular camo one, but again, just kind of playing around with this camo mixture. I don't know if you guys like this, but either way, uh, three favorite straps, Wotencraft, Kuda Camera Film Photo, and Coupe. 
favorite film? Uh, you guys probably already can guess. It is definitely going to be the Cine Still 800T. I do like the 400D as well, but in the end, especially because of my Hong Kong Neon project and shooting at night, actually even in the day, this film was pretty darn good. I love this film. Two favorite films that came out in 23 is the um, Kiki Pan 320 from Camera Film Photo. Uh, beautiful black and white, grainy, contrasty, lots of fun to shoot with. And as well, I haven't even got the results back yet from it, but I've seen other people's results and I love it, is the Harman Phoenix uh, color film. It's the first time that Harman is making color film. And this is kind of an experiment film, but what a awesome experiment. Most used camera for the studio, well, I'm using it right now, the Fujifilm X-T4. It's been my main uh, studio camera since 2020, and I was thinking about upgrading the XS20. What's the point? Same sensor, different processor, but for the way I use it, this is perfect. Even for a lot of product photography, I'll use the X-T4, but if I do need the resolution, and for testing uh, Fujifilm lenses, definitely the X-T5, it has 40 megapixels, and um, yeah, but for video, I actually prefer the X-T4 over the X-T5. And the build quality, I actually prefer the X-T4 over the X-T5. Most used lens for studio, again, I'm using it. It is the Sigma 18 to 50 f2.8. I did use the 16 to 80 for the longest time for studio, meaning uh, talking head video, video, and product photography. But I switched over to the 18 to 50 f2.8. Uh, the one stop uh, helps a little bit, the one extra stop brighter, but as well, just lighter, more compact. And especially for overhead work, you don't get the lens creep that I tend to get with the 16 to 80. So, favorite lens for the studio. Favorite lights, um, I have two of them. One of them is the Aperture MC. I've had these for a while now, but you see a lot of my product photography, there's like color and oftentimes in this corner here, you'll see uh, a, a, a blue light. Well, actually what I'm using is the Aperture MC, but this is the four light kit. So a lot of people have seen this, uh, these Aperture MC lights here. I actually named them all after one of the Beatles. So it was like John Paul George and um, Ringo. So I have four of these, control it with an app, can control which light, what color, uh, just light, compact, magnetic, and it fits inside this charging case. You can see the little fans on the bottom here. If I ever do need to take these out and about, it has a little carrying handle, and it has a little another little kit with uh, all the cables and stuff like that, but I love this. But as well as the, uh, the Hopalite Micro, this little thing here has its own little ba built-in battery, replaceable battery, really simple interface, really uh, easy to use accessories, compact, lightweight, and it just looks super cool. And oftentimes I'll have it in the corner here and add an extra highlight light in my studio when I'm shooting a video. Actually, here's the two-pack battery charger. So there's two batteries, two batteries actually in here. You can use this as the base, charge both batteries via USB-C, and then when the batteries die on these here, you just swap them out. But let's, uh, let's just turn it on now. And here we go. All right, so we got that, and what else here? Yeah, there you go, best studio secret weapon. I got three of them. Number one, toothbrush. What, what's up with the toothbrush? Well, when you do product photography, oftentimes, like, see these little corners here? Sometimes dust gets in there and the blower doesn't work, so I just use a soft bristle toothbrush, and you know, these things cost like a dollar or two, and so that's secret weapon number one for my studio. As well, I actually carry this with me, because oftentimes you see that I'm doing product photography in a restaurant or something like that, so take toothbrushes, but not for my teeth, but for cleaning my camera gear. As well, gaffer's tape. Always need gaffer's tape. I just set up some right now, because there's so much sunlight coming into my studio. Just use gaffer's put up a little mat, block the amount of light coming in, but I have gaffer everywhere. And even when I travel, I have a mini roll of gaffer and uh, this can solve a lot of problems when you're out and about. So big roll of gaffer. And finally, little air blower here. Again, to always keep things clean and dust free in your studio. Most used camera for travel for 2023, uh, two of them. Uh, one of them is like, it's a combo. Um, the Leica Q3 I have here, but also I had a Q2. So um, when I'm traveling and I'm in a hurry or if I'm really going to be busy, 
As much as I love shooting with rangefinders, sometimes you just want the shot. And so having a Q2 or Q3, uh, I had the Q2 in Germany and Italy throughout the summer. And as well, uh, when I went to Stockholm and when I went to Portugal and Wetzlar, I had the Q3 with me here. Both of them are great. I have a video coming out talking about the Q3 and the Q2. Great for travel photography, having something like this. And having 60 megapixels, being able to punch in and cropping without having to switch lenses is awesome. As well, M7. Always traveled with this. This or the oh, point and shoot, like a 35 Ti. I also borrowed Chris Meets Chris's um, tiara and so this also traveled with me all of the world and when I brought this back to Wetzlar they did a, a they fixed my shutter button here because I, I dropped it by accident when I was in Italy. Favorite travel accessories? I have quite a few of them. Uh, this is I, don't, I, I mean I don't know do I call this a travel accessory? This is so compact and small this is on a Angelo Pelle case with the neck strap so actually this is a really great way of just carrying a camera like this so it's kind of, you almost forget that it's in, like if this is in a camera bag, you'll forget. Again, while traveling, takes up almost no space and you know, you get beautiful image quality as well as with the uh, GW4 ultra wide angle lens. It does make it a little bit chonky, but still you're getting a 21 mil equivalent and I'll embed some pictures when I was in Italy. I went to a skate park and I had another accessory with me that I take with me everywhere which is the uh, EF-X20 flash unit from Fujifilm Discontinue. I have a little orange filter to warm things up because it is a daylight balance. So when it gets at night, it looks a little blue. So having a little orange filter is great. And putting this on, it'll fit on a like, it'll work on a Leica Q series. Any camera that has a center flash uh, contact, you have to shoot in manual mode, but this, with this, Great for night photography and I also put on this ultra wide angle lens here and great for travel and everywhere I went, even on my days off in Vancouver or when I'm overseas, always take an EF X20 flash, always bring a Ricoh GR because it just takes up no space. And as well as these uh, Ulanzi J12 lavalier microphones. Now this is for the iPhone, so it is using um, it is using a lightning connector, but they also have a USB-C version which you can use on the new iPhones or any Android unit. But uh, just a, a super simple, light, compact, um, lavalier mic system. So if you are either vlogging with your iPhone or mobile device, or if you're gonna interview someone, it's just nice to have something light and compact. And this doesn't even cost very much, like 30 or $40, I think, for this. Those are the travel must-have items. Oh, and one more item. Uh, this right here, it says the uh, Olight Arcfield light. Uh, this, there's a newer version with three functions. This has two. It has the UV light and it also has the regular flashlight with multiple power. I love it because it's nice and flat and it has a little pocket clip but also a front clip. So if you want to clip this on to your the lid of your cap, but it's flat so it fits nicely into your pocket on a plane you can't carry on a pocket knife and so this kind of uh, I'm used to having something in my hip here on my front pocket so having this with me great on a flight because sometimes you drop stuff and you want to just quickly see if the UV light I use it mostly to kind of charge up my my watch uh, loom so I can at night before I go to bed because I do sleep with watches on because I don't sleep with my iPhone so it's nice to have a UV light but as well if you drop something uh, you can use this and the UV light, it looks for stains and stuff in hotel rooms and bed bugs so you can look under the sheets. So great travel flashlight, highly recommend this. All right, so now let's talk about favorite new cameras that I personally tested in 2023. I didn't test a lot of gear in 2023, but the two that stood out is the Fujifilm GFX 100 Mark II that I got to test in Stockholm, but as well here in Vancouver, monster camera, basically merged the X100S with the original X100. It's modular like the X100, but without the big, huge kind of built-in grip, makes it more compact, new EVF, new LCD, just a fantastic camera. I highly recommend if you are looking for high resolution cameras. And number two is the Leica Q3. Uh, this is just a great camera. I mean, people complain about the price, but they're always sold out and in the, the genre of compact all-in-one cameras, there's basically 
and large censored cameras is the Ricoh GR3, the X100V, which you can't get anymore, and Fujifilm has stopped making it because the new one should be coming out very soon, and the Leica Q3. So in a market of basically there's only three real, I mean, there's the Sony RX1 Mark II, but that hasn't been updated in eight years, even though it's in stock. I don't recommend that camera unless you're a huge Sony fan or you're, you, you're a huge fan of that lens, but uh, great camera. I really enjoy this, but if I was gonna personally buy one, I would get the Q2 and, and save my money. The articulating screen on this, I actually didn't use this as much as I thought I would. I usually just kind of shoot blindly with this, meaning I just kind of look and shoot. I love the 28 and so this is the right focal length, but again, with 60 megapixels, you can definitely punch in and not really lose that much resolution. My favorite new lens that I reviewed in 2023 is this Sigma right here. The Sigma 10 to 18 f 2.8 and this completes the whole, well almost completes. You have the 10 to 18 and now you have the 18 to 50. Now we need a 50 to 150 to 8 and you have pretty much everything there. But this is a great lens. Uh, I've been testing it. I did a, my first impressions, great vlogging lens, but architectural, landscape, and I love the 28 mil equivalent. So it goes, it punches in as, as far as 18, which is APS equivalent to a 28, 27 point something or something like that. But, and then if you wanna go boom, super wide, I can't wait to use this lens in Hong Kong. All right, let's move over to camera bags, favorite bags of the year. Number one, the Wotencraft 7 liter Pilot. Uh, this is in the limited edition salt and pepper uh, colorway. I have the khaki version, which I gave to Chris from Chris Meets Chris because he loved it. I say this is the best kind of this seven liter size. I am testing a, a Billingham bag right now as well, the mini Eventer. Now I'm gonna do a head to head Against this, against this bag, very different bags, but I really like this bag for everyday carry. When I'm reviewing gear, it's expandable, looks great, and has all the right amount of pockets and space inside for, for daily carry for someone like myself. Number two bag is the 18 liter pilot for backpacks. If you're into backpacks, I have a dedicated video for this bag here, but uh, yeah, tons of cool features. Check out my video that I have. I think I made two videos with this, but when I need to carry lots of gear or a mixture of gear and other things, this bag right here is perfect. And inside here, as I mentioned in a recent video as well, I highly recommend, this is probably another one too, bag of the year, is this little five liter Cordura reusable shopping bag. Really well built. There is a larger, I think, 18 liter version that, uh, that you can put lots of stuff in here, but well built, doesn't cost a lot of money. So I recommend everyone. I have affiliate links down below. Even on the bottom here, there's a nice piece of leather that basically keeps the bottom rigid. So if you are just gonna be carrying stuff, I can fit my iPad, my MacBook, a water bottle, and a little point and shoot all inside here. It'll fit easily. So highly recommend this. And finally, my DOP kit. Uh, I've changed DOP kits over the years. I love this Chrome Industries DOP kit, but I hated taking stuff in and out of this because sometimes I wanted my DOP kit to be more carry aroundable. So I've been using this uh, moment. I'll write down here what which one this is, but this is like their fanny pack. It's much bigger than it appears. And so when I get on a plane, this is basically what I, carry my passport, my money, all my vital information, and you know, my AirPods, my whatever, film point and shoot. I keep everything in here, memory cards, and it's so small that it actually kind of fits, bit, depending on the plane, the little armrest, because usually they tell you before takeoff and landing to put all your bags under your seat or overhead. This is so tiny that I could usually kind of just hide it under my arm like this, and they don't see it or it fits underneath the armrest. And so uh, basically now this is my DOP kit that goes from bag to bag as I switch bags, but also I can pull this out and actually just carry this. So love this little thing. Oh, and my favorite travel bag, it's too big to bring, but it's the Oberworth, what, Oberworth Weekender Nelson M. It has that uh, little lower compartment where you can hold all your camera gear, and then the whole top section opens up, and it's just this huge cavity. So if you love duffel bags, you love like the Weekender bags, but you also have camera gear, having that built-in secret compartment to hold all your camera gear is great, and I used it 
on my last two travel trips. I'm gonna use it again for another trip coming up next month, but I think that's gonna be my main big carry-on for a plane because one problem with backpack carry onto an airplane, so your carry-on, is that there's so many little compartments and stuff. I find that when you're going to the airport, going through security, you're quickly looking for things, there's too many cavities that you can lose things. So in town, this is great. But while traveling, I think the Oberworth Weekender with the camera built, camera insert built in is the way to go. All right, favorite travel sneaker. These are the Boston 11 uh, Y3, so Yoji Yamamoto. Great, this actually, it was actually my buddy Otto at Adidas that recommended, not, not the Y3 version, there is the regular Boston 11s now replaced with the Boston 12s, which I haven't tested yet, but I love the Boston 11 so much that these went on sale. Now, these are like $250 more than the regular Boston 11, so like $450. I would not recommend anyone to spend $450 on a pair of sneakers unless you really, really want them. I bought these for like 60% off, and so I paid like $50 more for these than the regular Boston 11, so that's the way to go, but Love these for travel. I just walking around, really comfortable. I like these better than Ultra Boost. Ultra Boost seems to be too, like like a trampoline. It's too bouncy. This has as much cush as the Ultra Boost, but it tends to be more like memory foam. So it, it compresses and then it slowly goes back up again. So if you're walking, 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 it doesn't feel like you're bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. So I really love the Boston 11s. You don't have to get the Y3 versions, but if you can get them, get them. If not, Get them on sale right now because the Boston 12s are replacing them. All right, let's move on. Favorite watches of 2023, especially for travel. Uh, number one is the Momentum C Quartz 30. Austin, Simon, thank you so much. Um, I had a prototype when I went to, uh, when I started traveling, but I just love this watch right here on this orange strap. It also comes with a steel bracelet as well, but I just love this on the orange strap. And... The companion travel watch is the G-Shock DW5040 PG. So this is a limited edition. I have the Jason K's uh, bull bars on here, so it doesn't come with it like this, but this is the 40th uh, anniversary edition made in Japan, and it has all these little gold-plated uh, steel parts, but uh, beautiful watch, super simple module, but when I travel, yes, I should have a GMT watch, and I actually do have couple that I'm reviewing right now but when I travel basically uh, on the on this watch here I'll have home time and on this watch here I have local time plus alarms and timers and stuff so uh, to me I love wearing watches so any excuse to wear two I'll wear two but especially during travel it just makes sense for me to wear two I can just quickly check the time so when to call my wife and when not to call her because it's at three in the morning and here is just local time having here and not having to whip out my iPhone just to see what time it is. Favorite new tech. I'm actually, you guys may have noticed it. It's actually on my finger right here. It is called the Aura Ring. I'm working on a review on it. It's hard to review a ring, but you know, I as much as I like the Apple Watch, which I don't call it an Apple Watch. It's a wrist device. It's not a watch because then your iPhone's also a watch. If you put a strap on it, but this has all the sort of the sensors on a Apple Watch. I'm gonna just try to get you to look, see if I can see the and see all that. It has all the it has the oxygen sensor. It has the pedometer. It can read your body temperature. It knows when you go to sleep. It knows when you're exercising. So everything that an Apple Watch does, or almost everything that an Apple Watch does. This ring does as well, and it tells me how much sleep I got, how much REM, how much deep sleep. It tells me when my heart rate is elevated. When I got sick, it even said, hey, your heart, your body temperature is a little elevated. Are you sick? And then when I got sick, it knew when I was sick. It knows when you're jet lagged. It knows when you're not getting enough sleep. It knows when you haven't exercised very much. It tracks all of that on your iPhone app, and then it syncs in the morning. Again, I don't sleep with my phone. It's in a separate room. Definitely don't want to sleep with an Apple Watch and be buzzed all the time. So having something small like this, awesome piece of tech, but it doesn't look like tech. And so I'll have an upcoming video where I talk more in detail about this, but having this and then my two watches are pretty much, this is my wrist tech that I have. Favorite knife of 2023. If you've been following me on Instagram, 
you already know what I'm gonna say. It is the Wesson Microblade. Now they do have other knives, but this knife here really speaks to me. It's so small and compact, and it really is a daily carry. Titanium back, uh, G10 front, lots of limited editions. I'll put links down below. There's some funny videos where the, they made the shack knife. I saw, I visited the Wesson team when I was in Stockholm, and uh, it was great to meet the team, but they just, they have the shack knife the micro blade in shack size, and then Hasbulla, they actually were able to put one of these things in his hand, but as an everyday carry, this is great. My favorite pocket tool for the last couple of years now has still been this, this free T4 from Leatherman, because again, it fits easily in the pocket. It has all the tools that I need for everyday use, screwdriver, uh, box opener, so love this. Love this for almost kind of like a fidget tool or something, but it just, it's just so, it's like put it on a keychain, right? So two of my favorite pocket tools and, and, and my arc field flashlight for 2023. Um, I don't know what else to go through. Um, how about uh, favorite drink? Hong Kong style milk tea. Favorite restaurants in town? Maxim's in Chinatown and E.T. in East Vancouver. If you have any more questions down below, I have all the links down below, either affiliate or non-affiliate links for the stuff that I talked about. And if you have any questions or if you want to add your favorite things of 2023, add them down below. Unless, oh, and one more thing, I forgot to talk about it. This is my new logo here. My buddy Otto, he uh, designed this for me. I've needed a logo for years. And I basically said, I want something that looks like a like an old kind of vintage uh, Japanese uh, baseball team logo. And so uh, this is what he came up with. What do you guys think? And I will eventually make merch, but I don't know. Do you guys want merch? And also, do you want them on snapbacks or something a little bit more expensive? I've had a lot of people asking me, so let me know if this interests you. I made a black on black version, and then a white on black, and then a red on navy. And then I'll probably make t-shirts, and I'll put them on business cards, and maybe even right here, I've maybe even started the video, but I'll put it over here as well. So uh, yeah, 2024, let's see what I'm gonna end up using. Let's see what cameras are coming out. It's really exciting what Leica is gonna be coming out with, what Fujifilm. We'll see if Ricoh is gonna come out with the GR4. 2024, GR4 makes sense. Uh, X-Pro4 makes sense. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens this year. So thank you so much for watching. Let's, I started with the M10R, so I'll close with the X-Pro3. Thanks for watching and happy shooting. Peace.